In this video, we'll begin covering all the different aspects of the Flash CS6 interface. I'll just give a quick explanation of each, and we'll learn more about them as we progress through the series. For now, I just want you to have an understanding of what each panel does. So, when we open a new document, the first thing that we see, the most noticeable thing, is this big white box. This box is called the stage. This is what will be visible to the end user when it's run on their computer. Every element we place on this square will show up to the end user. Now, outside of this stage is a large gray area, which we call the work area. This is the off stage area. For example, if we have an animation where we want a character to walk onto the stage from the left side, then we can place them in the work area and animate them to move onto the stage. Continuing with that example, if we wanted to create a character to animate on the screen, we would use this toolbar on the right. With this toolbar, we can add geometric shapes to the stage, or we can add text, we can erase, and we can move things around. This is nice, but sometimes we need further control over these objects, and this toolbar here contains more options for us. We can access the color panel and the swatches panel, as well as the alignment tool, or view information about the selected object. We can also transform the object by rotating or skewing it, for example. If we click on an object, we can look over here at the Properties panel. We can view various information, like this object is a shape. We can see its X and Y coordinates, as well as its width and height. Over here, we can see the library, which is a collection of all the assets available to you in your project. To show you what that means, let's convert this square into a symbol, so it will be added to our library. To do this, you can either right-click the square and go down to Convert to Symbol, or you can just make sure the square is selected and press F8. I'll leave everything like it is, but notice the name of the symbol is Symbol 1. Press OK. Over here in our library, now we see Symbol 1. So let's delete the original square. You can see symbol 1 remained in our library even though the original square is gone. That's because we have created an asset out of this square. Now we can reuse it over and over. So let's drag one onto the stage. And another. And another. Each of these are three separate instances of the symbol 1 asset. Down here we have the timeline which is used for animation purposes, or to separate different sections, for example, pages on a website, on each frame. In the Properties panel, you can see how many frames to display per second, and you can edit your animation accordingly. The Output panel will display any messages you wish to display while in production, but these will not be visible to the end user. This can be good for testing certain functions or features of your application out. Next to that, we have the Errors panel, which will display any warnings or errors that Flash picks up on that may be causing problems within your project. If something isn't working, many times you'll be able to look at the errors and find out exactly what line of code is causing you trouble. However, this isn't foolproof. There are many errors that can slip through the error detection, and you'll still have to figure them out for yourself. Lastly, we add the menu bar, which contains access to everything we have just gone over and more. This is where we can save our documents or load them, we can modify different aspects, and so on. So that is a basic overview of the interface, and now you should know what I'm referring to if I bring up the stage or the timeline, for example. Thanks for watching.